Welcome to Guns and Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate you tuning in today. Today's a little special video that I wanted to do. The first video I did when I launched my channel a couple years ago was called the Not So Budget Precision Rifle Build. It's the first video I ever did. It was okay, and but I kind of wanted to redo it. I uh, feel like I've improved a little bit uh, behind the camera, in front of the camera, whatever you like to call it. And I just kind of wanted to go over this rifle. And I've done a couple things that I didn't have all in that one video that I wanted to show you. Anyway, so I thought this was a good opportunity to kind of, for you guys thinking about trying to build a rifle uh, to have as a precision rifle, then this would be a good video for you guys to watch. And back then I had no subscribers. Now I've got over 2,000. So I felt it would be helpful for uh, some new subscribers. So couple points real quick um precision rifle why do you need one obviously for prepping and things you just kind of need a long range option you know you need for hunting or whatever and you just need that option in my opinion and i think uh, if you look i did a video top six guns for preppers and one of them was a precision rifle now you can build yours like this you can have just a very nice capable um hunting rifle that um you know pretty accurate out to 500 yards or so and um but this one right here is uh started out with my budget was a thousand dollars i said hey i'm gonna try building a rifle for a thousand bucks and see what happens and i built this rifle for a thousand dollars originally and and i'll explain to you as we go in the video where i went over budget because i went over budget another thousand so i've got a little over two thousand dollars i have like two thousand and twenty some dollars in this thing um when it was all said and done so where i went over was i changed optics and when you and that's the thing about precision rifles you can type a ton of money in optics so and i even went on a budget with that compared to what's out there in the industry so keep in mind guys a thousand dollars is expensive two thousand is expensive you know and then a lot of the precision rifles you can get into five six seven eight thousand dollars which is very expensive so it's what's in your budget and you know kind of what your thoughts are is what you want to spend and what you can afford and things like that and i understand that but if you're going to build it like this and i'll tell you how i built it both those as we go through the video for around the thousand dollar mark and then how i got it to the two thousand dollar mark and it was essentially just changing the glass and the rings and bases which is where the uh, money came in um where i got over you know basically over a thousand dollars over budget if you will from my original budget um in theory i got about and i'll explain this uh with accessories and everything is uh, where i'm at the, a little over 2000 in the rifle itself with no accessories about 1800 uh, a little over 1800 so normally i in the past i'd always built rifles uh, precision rifles on remington's remington actions and i'd heard and i've had savage rifles over the years but mostly for hunting rifles and I'd heard a lot of great things recently in the last, you know, four or five years about Savage, great accuracy out of the box, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try one. I'm going to try building one and see what happens. And they um, they came out with some nice, uh, what I consider, eh, sort of tactical versions. Um, and this was one of them that would be a good base rifle to start with. And I didn't want to get too crazy with changing barrels and, you know, all these other things. So I just kind of wanted to see out-of-the-box accuracy without changing all those things. Because when you start changing barrels and all, that's not out-of-the-box accuracy. That's, you're having to change so much to get there. And, um, but this particular rifle started out um, as a Savage Model 10 P-SR in 308. Um, that's the model number. Um, Savage is kind of known to have a lot of different variations in models, and that was one of the reasons that um, for a long time it's hard to even get aftermarket parts like, say, stocks, because they kept changing models just by a little bit and changing a little bit here and a little bit there, and the stock manufacturers really couldn't um, <clears throat> kind of justify uh, based on you know the changing because this model may be in this year next year has changed and Remington has always stayed pretty much the same on the Remington 700 action so here lately they've started coming out with a few different uh, options as far as stocks um, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this little cover I've got on here 
off. I just put that on there to show you guys. And uh, we'll take that off and start showing you what all I have on this rifle. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. So, again, it's a uh, Savage Model 10 from the factory. This one comes with a tactical knob that... Uh, bolt knob that uh, which is a nice touch because a lot of people want that uh when they are getting into precision rifles that's just one of the things that they want is that the other thing that this thing has is it is threaded from the factory for a muzzle brake or su uh, a suppressor and that's why it's called sr suppressor ready so this one um started out with just a factory stock and i've uh, upgraded that what you have, what you see here is the Choate stock, and it is their tactical model. And I'm going to kind of go over some pricing as I go along with you guys uh, in the video. <clears throat> this particular stock did not come this color or camouflage, and I'll talk about that in, later in the video too. Started out as black, and that's the only color they come in as far as I know. They might come in like a tan or something, but normally it's a, just a solid color, which was my, and this one came in as black. And... Um, it also uh, from the factory has a little flush mount magazine and I'll, I'll tell you about this magazine here in a few minutes but um, starting out in the back of the rifle here and i'm going to take this off and i'll show you why here in a second this little pack All right, so one of the first additions besides the stock, and this choke stock is a very nice stock. It's a heavy stock. It's, um, it's you know, it's the quality's okay. It's, uh, it serves its purpose. It's very heavy duty. Um, it is, uh, it's not a Manners or a McMillan or anything like that, but it definitely is a good quality stock. In the back here, it has a nice butt pad. It also has adjustable um, pads that you can put in to make your length of pull uh, where you need it. Has this nice hook here you can grab hold of. Has this nice palm swell in here. And then one of the first things I did was add this uh, cheek riser. You're going to need some kind of cheek riser, whether it be a pad or you know something just like this. Uh, I opted to have both. Um, I just set this a little bit lower when I put this on because this right here is not that high to begin with. This is just more of a pack to uh, hold some accessories and gear that I might need. But um, the Kydex riser is a Southwest Precision. Uh, you're going to spend about $50 on that. Also keep in mind when you buy one of these risers that you are definitely going to have to drill a hole in your stock. Now, when I first had this rifle with the stock, the factory stock on it, I drilled uh, holes to put the uh, riser on the factory stock and dummy me, I didn't measure twice, drill once. I measured once and drilled once and wound up drilling twice and uh, it was just a little too far forward if I remember. It's been a while. That's been a couple years ago since I did it. Um, so just keep that in mind that you're going to start drilling into your stock uh, to mount one of those. But if you just be careful and do it, it's worth it in my opinion. I'll try and get my camera set up here guys. It's kind of tripod got a little off sorry um so that was one of the first things i did the other thing i did was i wanted to add this monopod here um normally i run a squeeze bag or some type of uh, you know bag like this and i actually have a little carabiner back here that i clip this to but I, you know this is pretty heavy you don't want to be dragging this thing around so it's nice just to have one that's on the rifle itself. And uh, this monopod, the way it works is uh, you have a little button on the side here and it comes down and then you can make your adjustments. The proper way to do this is to not lock it in place. You can if you're doing like some bench shooting, but in a competition style shooting it's too fast. You'll need to acquire targets too fast um, to do that normally in a stage. So the best thing to do is leave it unlocked and just use your hand to make the fine adjustments like that um, is the best way to do it. But you're also going to have to mount this. And the way I mounted it was with a small piece of Picatinny rail. This is a mag pull. And I simply just drilled two holes, marked them, drilled two holes, obviously a lot smaller than your screws themselves. Then I took two-part epoxy 
and I went in and uh, put uh, two-part epoxy on the screws in the hole and then underneath this channel here and screwed it in real nice and tight, let it set up. So hopefully it's not going to go anywhere. But there's not a lot of pressure on this back here that I you know, had to worry about where it would come apart. So uh, just some nice uh, wood screw, you know, metal type screws that uh, you know, grab and hold uh, where you don't have to thread them. So that's what I use back here. But that's, uh, that's this right here is a nice feature to add to your rifle if you uh, wanted to. And like I said, it did come with this nice um, tactical bolt handle here. And this particular bolt handle, if you look, I've got O-rings uh, in here. It's kind of rubbery and grippy. This did not come with that from the factory. I actually got the idea from a guy on eBay that sells a similar uh, tactical bolt knob, and he puts these little O-ring washers. I just bought them from, a, I think, a hardware store or automotive store, and just they're because they're grooved anyway, and they fit right in the grooves, which makes it a little grippy, uh, which is nice. And so I've added that. Then on the scope, here's where it got expensive as far as going over my budget. Now, it's still, in my opinion, a budget... This is a, even though it's a excellent, excellent scope, it's still a budget scope in, can grand, in the grand scheme of pricing of uh, precision optics. And this right here is the SWFA 3x15x42 variable. Um, it's the MRAD um, uh, reticle. And um, you're going to spend about $700 on this thing uh, from uh, SWFA. If you're not familiar with SWFA, I highly suggest you go look at them. Excellent company. They've been around a long time, and uh, they originally were called the Super Sniper, and they've just kind of shortened that to SS now. But they, I've had quite a few of their scopes over the years. Mostly they're fixed power. I've never had a variable, and I had heard good things about their variables, so I decided to buy it. What happened originally, the first scope I bought was a Primary Arms. And um, it's an excellent scope, and I'll put uh, in the section below which primary arms I bought. And there's a couple videos floating around on YouTube where that particular scope is used on a precision rifle build shooting out to 1,000 yards. Um, it's an excellent scope. I think you're going to pay around $300 for it. I hadn't checked retail on that in a while. Uh, but primary arms for a budget uh, entry-level scope um, that's first focal plane, so forth, it is an excellent scope. Uh, can't argue that. Uh, there's another scope out there that I would probably recommend. Um, and if I think of it, which one it is, there's one more budget one that's around the same price. And I'll, and like I said, if I'll figure that out, I'll put it in the section below for you guys. Um, Butler Creek caps. Now, these caps are a little different than your traditional Butler Creeks because I had to kind of dig around. I actually broke two sets of traditional Butler Creek caps and um, I was pretty upset. As a matter of fact, the first set I bought, I think I broke them within a couple hours. Um, I left them flipped up one day at the range right after I got them and put them on and I was at the range and I went to throw the rifle in the case and I left these up and they broke. Um, I'm just not happy. I like their I like their concept, like their design. Do not like that they're so brittle. Well, they've since come out with these. These are their tactical versions that um, are made of a rubber type material. So if you look, they're very flexible. They don't stay fastened really well. But I'm not too concerned about that, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just something to keep the dust and things like that, protect your lenses a little bit. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. But they just have two little nubs here on either side, and you just push them out. And then it has a, a little tab on top that I can fold it over like that and keep it uh, from... Uh, you know, flipping back on on itself. But uh, the scope here, <clears throat> it is a uh, first focal plane, and it has the MRAD uh, reticle in it. Excellent scope. They um, they run these on special occasionally, and uh, I got this one a little bit of a discount back when I got it. Um, but uh, the other choice that I was trying to make to stay sort of within a budget was my rings and bases. And I wanted to make sure if I could just... Spend as much money as I could afford, make sure I got good quality, and, you know, so I, I wound up researching a lot and looking at what was available. I'd had the, the real nice um, Badger ordnance. I've had um, Night Force. I've had all that stuff in the past, and I was trying to, again, stick with a, a smaller budget this time, and I wound up with um, the TPS Steel uh, 20 MOA base and TPS Steel rings. 
And if you're not familiar with TPS, um, look them up. They are excellent, excellent. I mean, these things are awesome. Um, they're they're built just as good as the top big name brands that everybody knows about. Uh, but you may not be familiar with TPS, uh, but a lot of people have heard of Badger Ordnance or Night Force, things like that. Um, when I was on the budget, the original budget with the primary arm scope, um, I think I had a Vortex there, uh, just a plain aluminum tactical ring, and then I had a Blackhawk base, um, which was fine, and I, I was it was very accurate. It, it still was fine. Matter of fact, the accuracy really didn't change, to be honest with you. Um, and the kind of the reason. Sometimes your confidence in your equipment helps you uh, shoot better, in my opinion. But uh, and I just kind of wanted a little, you know, step it up a little bit. I also went and um, got this um, bubble level here, and um, it is also made by SWFA. It's an excellent uh, thing to have, and I'll kind of see if I can get this turned around here and show you what this looks like. So if you look, this bubble level here. Um, there's two, it, it doesn't, a lot of them have, uh, marks in the middle. So you have your bubble tube here in the middle and it has two marks. Well, they did away with that. They shortened this span up across here and what you level with is between the two pieces of metal that is just the, the, the piece itself. So that's convenient where you don't have to look at a bunch of different lines. You don't have to look at these two lines on the outer edge of this and then also look at the line in the middle, the two lines in the middle of the glass to level your rifle. So that's a nice feature that I liked and I really, really enjoy that. That's probably my favorite bubble level. If you're looking for a nice bubble level, that's a good one. Another thing that I added, I wanted more uh, ammo capacity in a magazine. And with Savage, it's kind of limited. So there's a company called Dark Eagle Custom. And what they do is they take a factory mag, take the plate out of it, the bottom metal, and they add an extension to it out of aluminum. This is aluminum, and it is anodized, has Dark Eagle Custom on the bottom, LLC, which is a nice touch. And um, they also change out the... Uh, follower so um that's a it's a nice uh it's a very nice uh magazine it's not uh because you're using the like i said it's this is a factory matter of fact you i think you can even send them yours and they'll put the bottom on for a different price uh but you're going to spend about a hundred dollars for these magazines they're not cheap and you know i just have this one and then i have the standard factory one i think it's a four round uh from the factory but uh it uh, very nice i also added this um extension this magazine release extension it's also from dark eagle customs and um which makes it easier to uh release your magazine instead of it being up in here like a little tab uh able to uh, get that off the uh going a little bit more down the rifle here <clears throat> i've got um this bipod up front i originally started out with one of the black hawks just trying to stay on budget and this was another thing that i did and i doubled it so i think i spent like 40 or 40 bucks on the black hawk and i spent just over 100 for this one um this one right here is a harris bipod and um it's it's one of the notch legs it's excellent uh harris has been around a long time and um, hard to beat guys so if you're looking for a nice traditional this is traditional they've got a lot more you know uh tactical ones now that are a little different from different manufacturers but this right here is more of a traditional style um and but it's about a little over a hundred dollars for this the notch leg i also added this pod lock here because I wanted to be able to uh, make adjustments quickly. And this right here is a ratcheting system that allows you to move it. You don't have to ratchet, but it does have that feature. And what you do is you just take this front screw out here and then add this. And uh, this, pod, this pod lock here, they offer different versions as far as some are metal, some are, uh, this is like an ABS, uh, you know, type plastic and then they make them longer and shorter and different variations so kind of this right here i think is the medium and this one is the uh the plastic if you will it's uh, some type of polymer of some sort it's not the uh metal one but that's uh that and then the muzzle brake is i had read around and i'd actually bought one of these for my ar and this is a 35 dollar muzzle brake and i'll kind of give you a better look at it it's got your two gas ports at the top and then these big gas ports at the side. It cuts down on um, recoil very, very well. 
and this is a uh, $35 you can buy them on Amazon eBay places like that I actually have one just like it on an AR that I have a competition AR that I shoot and uh, it really really cuts down on recoil uh, it's loud uh, any muzzle brakes gonna be loud and that's just the nature of muzzle brakes but uh, you know, guys, I've got a few other things. Uh, this right here is a uh, TIS quick cuff uh, sling that um, is going to run you about $70, but these are excellent. This allows you to get in a lot of different shooting positions, and if you're not familiar with those, research those. And um, the, um, the case that I have here, I'll show you the case uh, real quick. The case that I keep it in is this case here. And that's a Condor, and um, it's it's a really nice case, and it's actually a shooting mat and case built into one, which is a nice feature that I can, uh, you know, fold it out and then have a sh nice shooting mat also. And I'll probably do a separate review about that later. Um, the uh, other thing I wanted to mention was the paint. Again, I told you early in the video that this thing started out as a black stock. I wanted to uh, camouflage, and I'm used to camouflaging my own rifles. And uh, I kind of wanted a little bit of two-tone where I left all the action and everything, uh, the factory black, and then uh, painted the stock. And uh, this is similar to a Manners pattern, if you will. And I've done a separate video about this uh, back uh, a couple years ago. But this is the sponge method. So I just put a, a, a base coat of green, OD green down, and then I use the sponge method. You can, again, you can research that on YouTube, how to do the sponge method. But I thought it turned out really well as far as the camouflage on it. And it's just a simple, you know, camouflage paint, spray paint, and you just use the sponge method to do it. Um, a couple of, back when I did the video, a couple people asked me about accuracy, and I didn't have any video at the time. And I actually still don't have any video of me actually shooting this crazy thing. But... I'm going to show you a couple targets. This right here was when I was sighting it in at 100 yards. Um, I had a couple. This right here was uh, when I first shot. And these right here, I think that's a group of three, was my second string of shots. And then this right here was a flyer. So I had, this was my original shot trying to sight it in. This right here was after I kind of fine-tuned it a little bit. And this right here was a flyer. And then I went on to, and I've still got to do a little bit of work to this thing. Because um, in this one, you can see that it's kind of a little bit high and right, just a little bit. And this one right here, uh, that's probably one, two, three, about five shots. So all touching, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, and that was at 100 yards, just kind of playing with it, sighting it in. Um, the I use, I don't use reloads. What I'm using in this is uh, factory. That was the other thing I kind of wanted to... It's not that I don't want to reload, but I like one that I can just find some you know, decent ammo, Federal match, Winchester match, and uh, straight out of the box and see how it shoots. And that's what I did. I took uh, Federal match and Winchester match to the range that day. And uh, uh, at the end of it, the conclusion was the batch of Winchester that I had, the Winchester match ammo, shot just a little bit better than the Federal, which is, again, both are excellent ammo, And but my I've got another rifle that um i don't shoot quite as often and it's uh it shoots better with federal match so just one of those things um you know just you just never know with each rifle is going to be different uh but luckily the factory load that uh i had with the winchesters shoot excellent with this thing but that's kind of giving you some ideas guys kind of a long video just because there's a lot to cover here uh with everything but uh, i think if you're looking for a good out-of-the-box rifle this right here would be an excellent way, way to start with a savage and um, you can get like i said uh, some cheaper you know scopes that are still capable uh, again there's a, a one video in particular i think military arms channel did one on a precision rifle build and i think it was me or one of the other guys that actually recommended uh, primary arms uh, scope to him because he was having some problems when he was doing that build with some other scopes and um it uh, turned out to be an excellent scope he liked it so that's uh, like i said there are some budget optics out there now that uh, you can uh, 
get there. You know, you can get to a thousand yards and, and be fairly comfortable with it and um, so forth. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate the support of the channel. And again, it's been a fun ride with you guys. Like I said, this was kind of a redo of the original first video I ever did to launch the channel. And I just kind of wanted to redo it uh, this today just to kind of uh, touch up on a few things that maybe I missed in the other video or whatever and just kind of the lighting was bad in that video and stuff like that and uh, I'm getting better with my productions and uh, it's been fun uh, if you would guys if you like our videos give us that thumbs up that always helps us with um youtube and the way they rank us and the way they share our content and things like that so it's very helpful it also lets us know that you like our videos that's always nice to know and uh, things like that if you're not a subscriber please subscribe you'll get like uh, uh content sent to you just to let notify you that we've got another video out and uh, it's always appreciative if, of our subscribers but uh, and don't forget we just had a contest i think the drawing is friday and um that uh, for the 2,000 subscriber uh, contest that we did, and uh, we're excited about that. So I appreciate you guys. As always, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll bring you another video shortly. Have a great day, guys.